Okay, so welcome to this session of Emerging OS Forum. Uh, today, uh, me, uh, Kazuya Sako, and Dan Yamamoto will be t doing this presentation. Uh, this presentation is for 40 minutes. Uh, we we, we, we plan to have 15 minutes, 15 minutes, and then leave time, uh, 10 minutes for Q&A. Uh, but uh, feel free to interrupt me while we are talking. So, uh, well, this, the title, is Open Source Implementation for Linked Data-Based Verifiable Credentials with Selective Disclosure and Zero Knowledge Proofs. Wow, there's a lot of technology terms in here. So I would like to see a show of hands. Uh, how many of you know what is linked data? Okay, what about verifiable credentials? Okay, what about selective disclosure? Okay, <laughs> none probably. And the last, zero knowledge proof. Okay, so that, that was the one with the most majority. So let, let's, let's start the presentation. So uh, I'll start with what verifiable credentials is. It is a mechanism to express digital credentials in a way that is cryptographically secure, privacy respecting, and that can be uh, read by machines. So this has been standardized at W3C, and currently it is data model is 1.1, but they are currently working on a version, second version. And you will see these three people when you see the explanation of verifiable credentials. So there is going to be an issuer who is going to issue credentials to a holder. For example, this uh, example, uh, the verifiable credentials is saying that this holder not name is John Smith, is living in Tokyo. And in order to make sure this is a correct statement, there is going to be an issued signature, digital signatures, uh, like, like this bit pattern. And then the verifier, what he wants to do is he is talking to this holder, and he wants to confirm, are you really living in Tokyo? And if he, if he is, he might be getting a 10% discount or something like that. So uh, the holder is going to use these verifiable credentials to show to this verifier, yes, I am indeed living in Tokyo. And this, uh, the presenting of this credential is called verifiable presentation. So the verifier receiving this verifiable presentation can confirm that this person's name is John Smith and his address is in Tokyo and there is issued signature, so this claim must be true if verifier believes the issuer. And uh, so, as I said, this can be used for identity documents like passport or academic certificates, like uh, I graduated from Waseda University or something like that. And uh, we'll see in the next slides, there's going to be a, a example of using it for vaccine credentials that someone was vaccinated. And there are variations of this uh, verifiable credentials and like uh, JSON web token based. And there is a special uh, JSON web token called selective disclosure SDJWT uh, based. But today we are going to talk about linked data, uh, linked data based uh, verifiable credentials. And I think I want to add here that we'll be talking about privacy respecting verifiable credentials. What do I mean by privacy respecting? If this holder, let's see if I can, yeah, yeah. So if this holder it only wants to show to the verifier that he lives in Tokyo, does he have to reveal his name that is written on this uh, credential? For privacy reasons, he just might want to say, yes, I live in Tokyo, and this issuer is saying, I am living in Tokyo. So uh, the selective disclosure means you can selectively disclose what, what is written on the credentials, and yet the verifier can verify that indeed uh, what the claim that holder made that he is living in Tokyo is correct. So that is, there is an issued signature on that statement. Okay, so I will move on. Uh, if you have any questions, again, feel free to interrupt me. 
So uh, I, I said linked database, and we made it LD for short. LD-based ver verifiable credentials, because we want to have machine readable, we are going to explain what is written, what are the meanings, what are the semantics written in the credentials. For example, in this example, so this person's name is John Smith, and he is uh, vaccinated in uh, this June 4th, and its lot number is 9999, and the, which vaccine he uh, vaccinated is the code 123, that's the name of the vaccine. And there is this issuer, perhaps Japanese government, saying, uh, yes, this person had uh, vaccinated on this date using the vaccine, and there is a signature. So there is this uh, linked data showing all these statements in a way that machine can understand. Okay, so what now, in this case, the verifier wants to know that you got vaccinated using authorized vaccine after uh, this year's April, okay? So in this credentials, what we have is that he was vaccinated using this vaccine code 123 on a certain date, but it doesn't say if this vaccine is authorized or not. So. Because this is a linked data, we can link these data that is written on the credentials. And we are going to have a second verifiable credentials that is indeed showing that this vaccine named code 123 is uh, called well, awesome vaccine. And this status is authorized. And that has been uh, certified by a different issuer with its signature. So, so from uh, the first uh, verifiable credentials, you cannot verify whether or not this uh, vaccine is authorized, but if you link these two together, then you can verify that this uh, John Smith has been, um, uh, has been vaccinated uh, using authorized vaccine after April 2023. So that's the merit of linked data, you can link of various verifiable credentials and prove a lot, uh, lot more predicates. So, coming to the privacy preserving aspect, do we have to show again the John, the name? Maybe I just want to prove I'm in a restaurant and I just want to show that I was vaccinated without showing my name. So, uh, with all this. Uh, all this statement about this John Smith, he can prove without disclosing his name or without disclosing the uh, credential uh, serial number or without disclosing the name of the vaccine and still prove that this vaccine has been authorized. And how we do that? We don't want to you know, link two credentials together uh, with a different vaccine. So there we are going to prove in zero knowledge that these, uh, the name of this vaccine here are equal. So indeed, the vaccine he received is authorized. And there are more things we can do. We want to hide the signature of this uh, written in this uh, credentials and same here because if we disclose signature these bit patterns can be used to trace the the user so even though he's hiding his name maybe he, if he used these credentials in a different place that can be linked and that's not good for privacy so that's what we have and also what's fascinating is that we don't have to show the exact date when vaccinated. We are, going, we are going to have a predicate proof that the date written here is earlier, okay, after, sorry, after. So it's going to be after uh, April 23rd, uh, so April so 23. So that kind of things can be also done in zero knowledge proof to for more privacy preserving way in a, in a way that the holder can disclose only the disclosure uh, only the information he wants to disclose and yet yet satisfy what verifier wants to verify well, I'm, I'm losing my I'm losing my okay and 
<laughs> well, I, I, I have a lot of functionality in here. So uh, if this credential is not bound to this holder, meaning if, if this was like this drink ticket we received, and this is not bound to us, then I can give this uh, ticket to him, and he can use it because it doesn't have any his name on it. So if this in this idea of verifiable credentials, if uh, because he's disclosing, well, he is not disclosing his name, it's hidden here, maybe he can give this whole set of verifiable credentials to someone else, and that someone who wasn't vaccinated can fool the verifier that he has been verified because all these things are hidden. But that's not the case we want. So what we are going to do is that we have this uh, pub public key tied to the holder, again, and this is not disclosed, but it is going to be the person who has a secret key corresponding to this public key that is subliminally written on the verifiable credentials that can prove that indeed this is my verifiable credentials. Okay, so that's going to be sent to the verifier as a verifiable presentation and uh, he successfully meets the goal with all these anonymity features and prove to the verifier that I got vaccinated using authorized vaccine after April 2023, and that is me. Okay, so, uh, good. Uh, so maybe I, I think I want to say something a little bit technical about this. So I've explained to you how fancy things we can do respecting privacy uh, and respecting uh, the, the, the correctness of the claims. But what is different here and what was the hard thing we did was that if we use this common digital signature to sign uh, verifiable, uh, verifiable credentials, and we can also do that, but we can't, do, uh, we can't simply do selective disclosure. Because if you're hiding some of the text that an issuer assigned, that means you can't verify you can't verify the signature unless you see the whole text. That is what the ordinary digital signatures are. So what we are going to do is instead of using these common digital signatures that we know it for 30 years, 40 years, uh, but instead we are going to use these zero knowledge friendly digital signatures like BBS plus signatures and Kamenius Lysianska signatures and Poinchwell Stern, Stern signatures so that we can still hide the parts of the message and still prove that the issuer signed this message. Okay, maybe this is a good timing to switch to Dan who will be talk, talking about our implementation using BBS plus signatures. Okay, thank you, Kazuya. So I'd like to introduce our implementation using BBS Plus signatures uh, with zero knowledge proof. And so first I try to explain what is uh, BBS Plus signature scheme uh, briefly. Uh, so this is a variant of a Bonnet, Boyan, and Shacham group signature scheme. So it's called as BBS stands for Bonnie Boy and Shacham, and it's uh, different from the uh, usual common digital signature. It's a kind of multi-message signatures. Uh, that means uh, uh, this uh, signature scheme can sign uh, multiple messages at once uh, and generating some uh, small signatures, short signatures. And it's based on elliptic curve cryptography, and it's not so brand new things. It's originally proposed in 2004, and currently uh, it's uh, uh, being standardized uh, by the IETF. So I believe uh, we will uh, use standardized BBS Plus signature scheme uh, in a few years, I believe. And uh, what's the uh, great thing about BBS Plus signature scheme, are already Kazle mentions uh, it can, uh, it enables us to achieve selective disclosure and proof of message equality, signature hiding, holder binding by signatures, and pairwise pseudonym identifiers. All these kind of privacy respecting and security features can easily 
ob uh, be obtained using this PBS plus signature scheme. And and BBS plus signature scheme uh, can be used uh, in a way just like the D uh, standard Disney signature scheme. So uh, we can uh, get multiple messages with uh, issuer's secret key uh, to generate some short signature value uh, using BBS plus signing algorithm. And uh, typically, issuer some uh, the role of uh, the issuer role can uh, uh, are doing this kind of things, and then uh, these three things, uh, including issuer's public key, and multiple messages, and signature value, are packed as a single credential, which is handed over to uh, the, to the holder, and then holder can use the second special algorithm named derive proof algorithm, then holder can uh, choose which part of messages should be disclosed to the third party. So in this case, uh, just say the holder choose uh, one and three as uh, disclosed indexes of this uh, credential. And now, using this derived algorithm, uh, the holder can get a special type of zero knowledge proof, which is non interactive proof. So, we can use this kind of zero knowledge proof value as our standard digital signature value. And uh, now, holder uh, packs uh, issuer's public key and uh, only disclosed messages. In this example, uh, the holder just pick up the M1 and M3 as disclosed messages and zero knowledge proof. Uh, all these things are packed into the presentation and holder uh, send this presentation to the verifier. And finally, verifier uses BBS plus a verification algorithm to check this presentation. Also, this uh, M1 and M3 are uh, actually the signed by the issuer uh, who has this IPK as its public key uh, using uh, this zero knowledge proof value and verifier can decide uh, they should accept or reject this presentation. So BBS plus signature scheme has this kind of algorithm already uh, they prepared uh, this kind of scheme. So uh, what we uh, did for uh, creating our prototype implementation are, uh, so yeah, the gap between this BBS plus signature scheme and linked database verifiable credential is the type of uh, message. So this BBS plus signature scheme uh, is a kind of basic cryptographic uh, building block. So it takes a sequence of integers as its uh, intended message messages so uh, but we want to uh, we want to assign to not only this kind of sequence of integers but also we want to sign to the linked data uh, as Kazuo mentioned so we need to encode uh, the linked data graph data into this kind of uh, integer array uh, to utilize this great BBS plus signature for our linked database verifiable credentials. So we uh, uh, developed some kind of uh, encoding from linked data to the uh, integer array, which is uh, given to the BBS plus signature. So this part is the one uh, what we uh, developed. Uh, from linked data, graph data, into this kind of integer array, which can be used as BBS plus uh, functions. So at first, uh, this 
figure, uh, this kind of diagram cannot be used as, uh, by the computer as it is. So uh, it should be represented as some type of format. And we can use multiple formats to represent this kind of linked data. But we just used uh, the, the most famous or uh, popular uh, format uh, to represent this kind of linked data, which is a JSON-LD, so JSON for linked data. So this diagram can be represented as uh, JSON-LD uh, as follows. Uh, for example, uh, the credential subject has ID XYZ uh, that corresponds to the, this part, XYZ, and whose name is John Sumis and who is patient of uh, some vaccination uh, where uh, the vaccination uh, is occurred uh, on 2023, June 4th, and vaccine code 1 to 3 was used in this vaccination. So this diagram can be represented as a JSON data using JSON-LD uh, specification uh, like this. And then we want to uh, we have to we have to convert uh, this kind of JSON data into uh, some type of RDF uh, data, which is actually named as uh, uh, NQuads document. So I don't have enough time to explain uh, what is NQuads document here, but just it just says uh, this uh, JSON LD can be represented as this kind of uh, the uh, sequence of RDF triples uh, like this. So uh, the essen essentially uh, both has the completely same uh, meaning and safe, same information each other. But the problem is uh, representing as RDF NQuads document has a kind of ambiguity or flexibility. So all these three NQuads document is uh, isomorphic uh, with the original JSON-LD document or the original diagram. Uh, this is completely not a uh, great thing for using signature scheme because if the signer or issuer uh, use the first NQuads uh, as a value to be si signed and if the verifier uses uh, the third uh, representation, then uh, the signature cannot be uh, verified uh, because uh, the message are, uh, looks like a completely different. So we need to uh, remove this kind of flexibility or ambiguity uh, uh, caused by using this kind of RDF NQuad statement. So that can be done using uh, by using the RDF canonicalization algorithm, which is also currently uh, being standardized uh, by the uh, W3C. And actually, Kazue and uh, I are uh, a member uh, of uh, this working W3C working group, which is standardizing uh, this canonicalization algorithm. So if we use this special type of algorithm, then we can uh, reduce or remove uh, the uh, flexibility or uh, ambiguity uh, of these NQuads, or oh, sorry, NQuads uh, document to get the single uh, deterministic uh, canonicalized uh, NQuads. Then now uh, we can just split uh, all these terms uh, in this document like this and then use some special type of hash function to get integer. So then now we finally get the integer array which can be uh, given to the BBS plus function. So we can now successfully uh, sign uh, linked data uh, using BBS plus uh, algorithms. So we implemented uh, this kind of encoding and lots of uh, other um, way to uh, yeah, re uh, necessary uh, components. 
uh, into these these uh, demo application and three uh, open source uh, libraries. So uh, we developed. Uh, uh, we okay. Uh, at first, we are using a uh, third-party uh, open source library, uh, which is provided by Doc Network, uh, which is great uh, cryptographic library, uh, which already uh, developed BBS plus signature scheme and related zero knowledge proof cryptographic things. So uh, we what we developed are uh, these middle layers uh, libraries, which or uh, implemented the encoding scheme, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, kind of Rust APIs and uh, TypeScript or JavaScript APIs uh, to use all these functionalities uh, as a developer-friendly uh, way, I hope. But currently, uh, the documentation improvement are uh, completely required and code optimization are not uh, sufficiently done yet. So we need to yeah, uh, keep uh, doing uh, all these things, but uh, you can uh, still check uh, to, uh, sorry, uh, check to uh, our uh, implementation, uh, current implementation uh, on the GitHub. And uh, about this, demo application, uh, we uh, developed some kind of a playground uh, web applications and we you can use uh, this playground uh, to access this URL or QR code and we, uh, you can try uh, the kind of the zero knowledge friendly uh, features uh, of verifiable linked database verifiable credentials on this playground. And if I have enough time, then I try to uh, show uh, a few uh, functionalities uh, now using this playground site. So this is uh, the playground site. Uh, and the left side, you can see issuer part. And the in the middle of issuer and verifier, uh, you can see the holder part. So at first, I can uh, use this playing ground as an issuer to uh, issue some kind of linked data-based verifiable credentials. So this is the first example of credential, which is about, uh, again, John Sumis, who, who is, um, whose birth date is blah, blah, blah. And He's living in uh, city A. So this kind of verifiable credential draft are now set in this issuer part. And you can see there are no uh, signature value yet because it's a uh, draft and we have to generate some signature uh, uh, for making uh, this verifiable credential draft as verifiable one. So you can click issue, then now this holder can now get the verifiable credential because uh, this credential now has this proof value part, uh, which is the base 64 encoded value of BBS plus signature uh, value. So this is now verifiable. So you can check, okay, this uh, credential is uh, completely the uh, authentic one. So if you try to forge, for example, it's not John, it's Jane, then you cannot convince the verifier to be accepted the, this credential. So it should be John as an authentic one. And you can show this credential as it is, but now you we can use selective disclosure feature. So if you want to hide this uh, ser serial number of this credential and if you want don't uh, if you don't uh, show this John's identifier and John's given name and family name and birth date and if you just want to show okay I am uh, I live in city A uh, without showing uh, your name or your identifiers, then 
uh, you just edit uh, as uh, like this and click the present, then this presentation is what if the verifier can see. And this has its own proof value with the credential subject part that only includes uh, John Smith's uh, home location, city A, without any uh, his name or his uh, birth date. But still, it's, it can be uh, verified using BBS Plus signature with zero knowledge proof. So uh, this is a kind of uh, privacy respecting uh, presentation of the verifiable credential. And it also has a linked data specific uh, feature, but I think I don't have enough time to explain it. So I skip it and back to the slide. And I want to say that uh, conclusion of this uh, presentation. So we uh, have developed uh, verifiable credentials using uh, linked data uh, featuring a selective disclosure and uh, various uh, privacy preserving features based on zero knowledge proofs and implemented and released uh, open source prototypes along with a web-based demonstration. And our future work uh, includes extending uh, other features like credential revocation and uh, delegation capabilities and also we uh, have we should we have to uh, enhance code quality for uh, better performance and maintainability so i'd like to yeah uh, uh, give uh, uh, many uh, other people's uh, yeah uh, skills or experiences to yeah and make our code quality for uh, better maintenance uh, better maintainability and we also aim for interoperability with other projects like uh, Hyperledger Anoncreds and Hyperledger Agora Labo project because Anoncreds and Agora are completely uh, cryptographic uh, things and credential things. So it's uh, very uh, really uh, similar. Uh, yeah, the goal and fields are completely uh, same as ours. So I think we can cooperate with each other too. And make a better society and and conduct thorough security and privacy analysis to facilitate future standardization and finally we will uh, want, we will uh, develop a kind of post quantum security things so that's it so thank you for uh, audiences thank you for uh, your uh, listening so uh, if you have any question or comments then yeah feel free uh, to ask us uh, thank you Time for Q&A, yes. Thank you so much for your uh, talk. And I, my name is Hirotaka I'm from Goldman Sachs. And uh, I have one question. Actually, two questions, but uh, I, the, I have one question. The first question is that, so uh, in the, during the demo, you showed that uh, you, we can detect deduct f the specific name from the JSON uh, LD. But uh, at the same time, like uh, the you mentioned about the BBS, and uh, we need to have a certain um, order for verify that those uh, messages. And how can we determine that? For example, this the original message have name, but uh, the uh, presented one only has home location. How do we can detect that home location is kind of like message number three or four or something like that? So how do we determine that in the, from this JSON? Yeah. Great question. I just skipped the complicated part of uh, deriving proof uh, using BBS Plus with this kind of linked data. So, uh, but uh, if I uh, say briefly, uh, we use uh, some kind of, uh, yeah, the holder. Holder can simulate uh, uh, the verifier's view or uh, how can I say, the holder can, a uh, holder knows everything. So holder knows uh, if the verifier uses uh, W3C RDF canonicalization to this presentation, then the verifier must see uh, this sequence uh, of uh, integer messages. 
and so the holder can create some kind of permutation or mapping uh, from the original order to the uh, derived order, which will be shown to the verifier. So holder just calculates such kind of permutations or mappings and uh, try to embed uh, into this presentation. Actually, this uh, proof value part, uh, in this proof value part, uh, such kind of permutation or mapping is already embedded. So the verifier can use uh, such specific information to uh, reorder uh, the uh, derived message into the original uh, structure or uh, the order of the messages. So that is the complicated part, but yeah. Uh, we use Thanks so much. Hello. Yeah, so uh, like you said, you are uh, like collaborating with Hyperledger also. And even blockchain, uh, Z there's a lot of research going on in Z ZKB, right? So like how can we, you know, use directly this in blockchain? Can you talk more about that? Okay, so we need to be careful how we are going to use blockchain because this verifiable credentials has a lot about personal data. So, and GDPR does not allow us to use blockchain for putting out our personal data. So what we think uh, blockchain is important is that uh, we want to staple issuers' uh, public key. And for that reason, I think blockchain is a great place to use it so that the verifier is not looking at the wrong ver uh, issuer's public key. Hope that answers your question. Thank you, thank you. Let me ask a very basic question. Um, can you share uh, about the uh, targeting uh, use case as a viewpoint of from the social impl implementation? Okay, thank you very much. I, so uh, maybe I have a question to all of you. Is anyone from Europe today? Originally? <laughs> okay, so uh, in your EU is mm -hmm. considering a digital identity wallet oh, yeah. for all the people in e EU, mm -hmm. and they are thinking yes. about these verifiable credentials. However, uh, they are not using BBS plus signatures, so there is an issue about privacy, which we are very much concerned. Mm. But still, uh, that's a way forward. So uh, maybe we can start with the very basic ones and then enhance it to use this, all of these nice features that we can enjoy privacy. And that's I think, is a big use case that we need to consider. Mm. Thank you very much. We have two more. Okay. Sorry, again, sec second question. So, um, so in this, uh, I think it's a uh, work, work, in work in progress, but uh, I, uh, it, this demo, like we can, so a uh, holder can pass that credential to someone else. And I think still like someone else can utilize it. Is it correct understanding? And also, like, if 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 so, like, is it uh, how do we prevent? Like, we, we need to show, like, for example, I I'm holding this the credential and Sakosan and I pass it to Sakosan, but Sakosan should not be able to use that one. So, how do we implement like your uh, this mechanism? Yes. So, uh, we assuming here that a person is not giving away his or her secret key to someone else because it's dangerous. And in order to do that, maybe we can embed the secret key in a smartphone and you don't really want to uh, lend it to the smartphone to someone else. Or uh, we can have like uh, uh, other biometric uh, feature inside so the verifiable credentials show your face or something like that. So there are, maybe it depends on the use case you want to implement. But yes, we have to think very carefully about what kind of misuses you want to have. And in this playground, you can use this uh, holder options or part to indicate uh, the holder's secret. So if you, it's not completely not secret value, but if you use secret as a secret value, then, uh, uh, and then uh, using this kind of uh, complicated things to uh, get the 
uh, bound type of uh, verifiable credential, then uh, uh, the person who knows secret is, uh, can uh, only uh, show credential as presentation. And we also oh. see um, well just this might be a silly question, but is it possible to rotate the secret of the holder? To rotate change? secret is one of the challenging things. So we are now trying to solve such things, but okay. it's not uh, implemented yet. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.